starts right now. And happening right now, a jury deciding a woman's fate after she was accused of shooting and killing her boyfriend back in 2016. That man passed away back in 2016. And seven years later, Amanda Montoya will learn how the rest of her life will look like. Erica Hernandez now joins us live here in the studio. Montoya been on trial all week. It just was given to the jury just a few minutes ago, matter of fact, Erica. Yeah, about 30 minutes now. They may have been uh, deliberating now. It started around 9. Some people don't understand there's sometimes a charge of the court that has to get read. And then each side gets both their last chance to tell the jury their case. Now, some backstory on this case. In 2016, Cesar Gallegos was found dead in his home from a single gunshot wound. Montoya was at the scene when police arrived. She was arrested and charged. In 2020, Montoya had her first trial, but it ended in a mistrial because the jury couldn't decide on a verdict. Testimony for her retrial began on Tuesday this week, and the defense spoke about how from day one this entire incident was a tragedy and that Montoya and Gallegos didn't have a violent relationship. In fact, they were seen dancing in the backyard by a neighbor just hours before the shooting occurred. But the state contended that the evidence didn't show this was an accident, that it was murder. Now, we will see what this jury decides once they make a decision or if it ends in another mistrial. We will just have to wait and see. But if found guilty, Montoya faces up to life in prison. David, Tiffany. Erica, what are some of the challenges of this case? I think because it is a retrial, they didn't, you know, the first open, in opening, the state said, we don't have a lot of, there wasn't an eyewitness ev evidence. There wasn't a person who saw this crime be convicted. So that was a huge hurdle for them to overcome, as well as the, the, the defense saying, you know what? He took his gun out. He was waving it around. He set it down because he did have, he had had a lot of drinks that day that they had his toxicology results and that she was trying to get him to put it away. As she was handing it to him to put it away, he grabbed her arm and that's when the gun went off. So that was their theory on what Amanda claimed happened. So it'll be really interesting to see how this goes and what the jury will side with. Always a retrial costs a lot of money. That's one of the that's one of the things that's considered by the prosecution before they go to a retrial. But they must think they had a pretty strong case to do again. But what are the odds that the verdict comes back the same as it did the first time? It, you know what? I can never say. I used to think I could predict. I could predict this jury. I know what they're going to do. This is guilty or this is not guilty. And I'm always surprised. I'm always surprised with the decision or how long we wait to see a verdict. And I could see them taking a long time trying to decide what they're going to do because, you know, and and people should feel good about that, that they're actually in there. They're talking through this. They're looking at the evidence and making sure because obviously, you know, Montoya can go to jail for the rest of her life. And I'm sure the Gallegos family wants some kind of closure in this case as well for for his death. All right. They've been in uh, deliberations for about a half hour now, and uh, we appreciate that. We need to stay on top of that as well. If something happens quick, she'll let us know. Thank, Thank you. you, Erica. Thanks, guys. Now, a family's tragedy is also the subject of a criminal case. A father accused of leaving his baby alone in a bathtub full of water. That baby died as a result. As Katrina Weber tells us, San Antonio police say the father was on the phone when all this happened. A mugshot marks the first day of the rest of 30-year-old Esteban Flores' life without his eight-and-a-half-month-old son. On the same day the baby, identified by the medical examiner as Micah Flores, died, his father was charged in connection with his death. An arrest affidavit says Esteban Flores placed his son into a bathtub Tuesday afternoon inside their apartment in the 8800 block of Starcrest. Then, with the water still running, it says he left the room to join in on a video phone call. When he returned later, it says the baby was floating in the tub with water overflowing. Police say the person at the other end of the video phone call could see what was happening in that apartment, noticed that the baby was lying lifeless on a bed and that Flores and another adult there weren't doing anything to revive him. That person, according to the affidavit, convinced them to call 911. The baby in critical condition was rushed to a hospital. However, the medical examiner's office confirmed he died yesterday. Flores was arrested on a charge of injury to a child. Police have not said whether they plan to make any more arrests. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Outside with live cameras, foggy this morning. And not so much now, which is a good thing, I guess. 
Yeah, it's turned into a beautiful day. Yesterday it was foggy. The clouds hung around a little bit longer. Today we're seeing more sun. So it's going to be a warmer day, but a lot of back and forth going on. We got a couple fronts ahead of us and uh, some cooler weather next week and a few changes in the extended forecast we got to talk about. But first, let's look at where the cloud cover is now. There's not much of it. Uh, we're seeing uh, generally clear skies here around San Antonio and temperatures in the upper 60s. We'll make our way into the 70s this afternoon. 70 in Hondo, 75 Pleasanton, 74 right now in Kennedy, right around 70 here in San Antonio. There is a frontal boundary that will work through tonight, a very weak one, but it will have an impact on our temperatures for tomorrow. Uh, maybe you're at Planning on tailgating today for the UTSA game, which of course is tonight at the Alamo Dome. Senior night. Temperatures will be in the 60s and 70s throughout the rest of the afternoon. Great for tailgating uh, if that is on your agenda today. And then we have to talk about that front. So yes, 78 is going to be our high, but tomorrow the difference uh, this front makes combined with more cloud cover should keep temperatures in the 60s. So a little cooler on your Saturday. Uh, Sunday and Monday warms back up again before another front comes through and then again some changes next week and we do have a few things we have to talk about when it comes to Thanksgiving some changes in the forecast models more on that in just a bit guys forward to that thank you Justin people who live on the southwest side are asking for some help due to some health concerns the request comes after the residents found out from the San Antonio Fire Department that a scrapyard center on Freero City Road has been the scene of six structure fire calls since 2021 the most recent fire in September took more than 10 hours to put out. SAFD says most of the fires they respond to at that location are because of burning scrap metal and machinery. SAFD confirmed Hazmat has also responded to those fires. No immediate danger was reported after air and runoff monitoring, but as we learned during a meeting that included state and city officials, concerns are still high among neighbors. It's metal, it's uh, oil, it's all kinds of toxic waste. Uh, that's that's going into the neighborhoods. We just want to know why what's going on. Why is it getting so bad now compared to what it was 20 years ago? Our reporter Avery Everett went to Monterey Iron to get some reaction before she could talk to anyone. She was asked to leave. So instead of an interview, they sent us this statement. They wrote in part that six fires were beyond its control. If you'd like to read the full statement from Monterey Iron and look for next steps for this neighborhood, you can head to our website ksat.com. Two people were stabbed overnight on the city's west side. San Antonio police say this happened just after midnight on Fisher Field Drive. A man and his grandmother were both stabbed. The man was taken to the hospital and is expected to be OK. Neither victims would cooperate with police so far. There is no information on the suspect. The woman was treated and released at the scene. Two men have been arrested after that raid on Bassey Road Wednesday. Esteban Flores and Paul Chacon are charged with murder. San Antonio police arrested the men at a home near West Avenue and I-10. The ATF and FBI also involved. According to arrest affidavits, there's cell phone video that shows men beating and torturing 31-year-old Joe Anthony Guerrera in that home. His body was later found in a ditch in April of last year. And no matter where you live in the area, you've likely encountered potholes. Now Bear County is doing something about it. It is the first in the country to use a new material that is meant to make roads stronger. And crews say there are also long term benefits. It's going to last longer. Uh, we won't have to come out as many times to patch it and uh, and drivers will have less inconvenience. The county's pilot program will last six months and crews will then evaluate the asphalt. Coming up, Wimby talks about the way Pop has approached him and his coaching style for the rookie. That's coming off his worst performance so far this year. It's coming up in sports. The city of San Antonio has received hundreds of applications for a program to help preserve homes by making minor and major repairs for free. How it's helped one family make new memories in a safe space. Next. We do want to let you know about a change in programming this evening. The Bernie Lavernia football playoff game will not air on Kesa tonight. Instead, it's going to be on Me TV. Kickoff is at 7 o'clock for that game. And tonight's new episode of 2020 on former Border Patrol agent Juan David Ortiz will be airing on KSAT 12. Ortiz is convicted of killing several women on the U.S.-Mexico border. Our own Erica Hernandez will be featured for her work covering the investigation and trial. 2020 airs tonight at 8 o'clock. 
A city program helping preserve homes is closing applications pretty soon and hundreds of people have already applied. Today we share the story of a local family who says they are now living in a healthier and safer environment thanks to this program. Ruth Payne says many memories were made in this neighborhood. I've been here all my life. Not only did she grow up here, but she raised her daughter here too. I went to high school here to Southwest. Um, my daughter grew up, went to Indian Creek, went to Scobie Junior High, graduated from Southwest High School. While some things haven't changed, her childhood home has. My home was demolished. A new home was built for Ruth and her family at no cost. She was chosen for San Antonio's home rehabilitation program and received a forgivable loan. Her old home had several issues. I had no plumbing at all whatsoever, uh, electrical faults, foundation, repair, structural. I mean, I'm talking about everything. My house was completely on the ground, not safe at all because the house would have, could have collapsed at any time. Veronica Garcia, director of the Neighborhood and Housing Services Department, says they have funding to help about 600 people a year. We're looking for families who are low to moderate income, making less than $65,000 a year. What are families dealing with right now? Yes, families, um, many families have owned their homes for generations, and some people just do not have the funding set aside to go ahead and make the major repairs at owning a home for a long period of time. The program will help with minor repairs, like replacing water heaters or windows, to major repairs like fixing the foundation of a home. All of our rehabilitation projects come with a one year warranty. So if there is an issue that comes up within that year after the work is done, we can bring the contractor back, take a look at the issue and make those repairs quickly. Applications will be accepted until this coming Monday. When you look at your home right now, how do you feel? I feel truly blessed. Um, I'm very grateful and appreciate, you know, the city of San Antonio for all that they've done for me and my family. It's created a new chapter for us and we're living in a safe environment now. A program that is helping many families right here in San Antonio. Outside with live cam, what a beautiful looking day. Today is going to be, I hope this is a prelude for the entire weekend right yeah. here. What a great way to kick it off. Kind uh -oh. of. Kind oh, of, kind of. <laughs> that face. <laughs> I don't want to rain on your parade. There's no rain oh. this weekend, but we are going to see a little bit more cloud cover, a little cooler on the weekend, but still fine, still fine, still good weather, nothing uh, drastically changing. Uh, the aquifer is uh, actually up a tenth of a foot today, 636.2 in your pollen count. Molds are low and pigweed is low. Couple fronts to talk about next week, maybe some changes. We're going to discuss all that coming up. We're in Texas, so ice doesn't, doesn't go in iced tea. It actually goes on the ground right there. The Rotary Ice Rink is back at Travis Park. It opens today. Look at that. <laughs> There's nice. a ribbon cutting ceremony this afternoon, and then at 6 tonight, the rink opens to skaters. Tickets are on sale at rotaryicerink.com and cost $15 for general admission. There are discounts available for military members and first responders. This year is going to mark the ice rink's fourth season once again. Been down there to watch some of these ice skates. There's a lot of kids in San Antonio, a lot of adults too, that can, that can actually ice skate. Yeah. You know, it's like they get out there and have a good time. It's like, it's pretty impressive. It looks like fun. Yeah. I'm not one of those. We just don't need <laughs> it melted, <laughs> problem. I've taken the kids last two years. It's have a you? lot of fun. Yeah, I have. They love it. I am horrible at ice skating. <laughs> I don't know why. Did you fall several times? Well, yeah. you know, when you're 6'4", that's a long way down, it's, and I then it's like, hard to get back up. I, I look similar to a giraffe trying to ice skate. Oh my. That. It's not pretty. Uh, I'm working on it, though. We can all get better in our older age. Uh, let me show you a map here across the state of Texas. Uh, that is our cold front, and I show you the dew points because the temperature change isn't all that great, but we can see it a little bit better when it comes to the humidity. Drier air starting to work in from the north and west, and this front is going to make it here by this evening. Won't do a whole lot for our forecast, but it does bring some changes uh, by the weekend. We discussed this a little bit earlier. 78 today, rather warm, mostly sunny, and then tomorrow, mostly cloudy and 68. So about a 10 degree temperature drop, not necessarily just because of the front, but because we'll see the cloud cover too, and then just kind of 
locks in the cooler morning temperatures and you don't really get a chance to warm up. So that's what's to, uh, that's what you can expect on Saturday. Uh, here's a look at the time lapse and we did get the fog rolling in again this morning. It was pretty thick for a time and then just as quickly as it came in, it has cleared out. Blue skies, 68 degrees at the airport right now, 71 in New Braunfels. 69 to gain 68 burning look for these numbers to take some big jumps here next couple of hours. We don't have any clouds to contend with, at least not right now. There are still some clouds around Kerrville. We've seen a few around Del Rio, but it's hit or miss type stuff. And uh, the sun is out in full force here in San Antonio. Uh, 75 Pleasanton, 74 Kennedy, 70 right now in Gonzales, right around 70 in Bear County. And uh, with some clouds in Bandera, 71 degrees there. Uh, here's the forecast for today. Again, we make it up to 78 and then uh, fall down into the 70s tonight. Even with that front, it's not going to get all that chilly. 64 to 11 p.m., 63 at midnight, and probably falling into the mid-50s by tomorrow morning. So Saturday, a little bit cooler. Sunday, 70, not bad, still mostly cloudy. Monday, another warm day, 78, before our next front comes due. Right now, this is scheduled for late on Monday. And then that knocks the temperatures down again next week for our holiday week. Now, there are some changes here that we got to talk about, so let's uh, take a look at the future cast. There's the first front. Uh, we discussed it. No rain with that. Here's the second one. Sunday, maybe a shower, but I doubt it. Monday, maybe a little bit better chance of rain, but even then, we're talking 20%. The window is small. We can see a shower or storm Monday afternoon as the front comes through. Then it turns windy. Some gusts close to 35 miles per hour possible on Tuesday. It's cooler. And then as we get into Wednesday, We'll start to uh, see a few thin high clouds, uh, but Wednesday should be nice. Now, here's the question and here's the issue that we're having. Our computer models, sometimes they flip. They go back and forth, uh, and there's not a lot of consistency. We now have a computer model that wants to bring a little bit of rain back in on Thursday uh, if, uh, if, the, if the setup is correct. And so that's something we'll have to watch for. I think the odds of that right now are low, but it is something to watch. Otherwise, we'll have temperatures in the 60s and it'll be a nice Thanksgiving unless what we're looking at in this particular model pans out. <laughs> I know that's a lot. Stick with me here, but uh, know that we'll be updating the forecast as often as we get this new data in, and it will be uh, letting you know if things do indeed change. And I think on Friday we'll have a chance for a few showers as well. So here it is in the seven day forecast. Uh, we talked about the weekend, 20% chance on Monday, windy and cooler next week. And right now we're going partly cloudy and 66 on Thanksgiving. Uh, again, if something changes there, we'll let you know, guys. I love this newscast and I love this forecast. Well, good. <laughs> Hopefully you'll love the question of the day from yeah. SA Live just as much because apparently we're going to have another battle over some Thanksgiving sides as if we haven't, uh, you know, had enough yep. this, this week. Okay, so here's the question. Yeah. First of all, look right. at this beautiful table that has been set up for us here. Wow. Moms who party, wow. I'll tell you what, they have got, yeah, the, these two wow. ladies, we're going to talk to them about this because, boy, do they have something to make your Thanksgiving easy. And we have some beautiful couple of side dishes on here. So the question is, earlier it was like, what's the side dish you're going to get seconds of? What's the one you're mm -hmm. going to pass on Ooh. as far as side dishes? Sweet potatoes, cranberry sauce, green bean casserole, potatoes, that would be like... Probably we'll call them mashed potatoes, stuffing or rolls. What do you pass on? We have a tie right now. I know. Pass on the sweet potatoes. What? Would you? Yeah. No, I'm not. A, I'm not a sweet potato fan. The only thing I ever liked about the sweet potatoes is if the marshmallows on the top were like <laughs> roasted, then I eat that. But I'm not a sweet potato fan. How about you, Tiffany? I love um, the potatoes and the rolls. Those are great. So what are you gonna pass? Maybe the green um, bean casserole. Ooh. Mm, yes. Ooh. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what, folks. <laughs> like Scan yes. that QR code, and we're going to say, oh, look at that. More people are passing on the green bean casserole. Yeah, <laughs> no. two to one compared to the uh, mashed no. potatoes. So scan the QR code, and we're going to keep checking in on that throughout the course of the show. And wait till you see what these moms who party are oh. doing with this table. You're going to be amazed by it. Man, I already saw part of it, and, uh, you know, you're standing in front of a really good-looking turkey. It oh, looks yeah. amazing. Yeah, good yeah. stuff. All right, Mike, see you in a little yep. bit. Justin, what would you pass on? We'll get you. We'll get that answer in just a second. We're talking about sports. I just wanted to know what you what you passed on. <laughs> you, none of it. Harlan High School has a lot of cheer for tonight. They've got the guys are on the football field. The girls are on the volleyball court. Man, they're busy with all those fans over at Harlan. And Davenport has a chance to keep their history making run going. We'll talk about that when we come back. <laughs> 